Um, so let's get started with today's class. Um, I am going to take a look at this piece right here and talk about what is it that's stopping it from being like legitness, right? So what's stopping it from going over to advanced? The rendering is there, the detail is there, but what is missing that makes it look a little noobish? Um, but before I do, I want to start with some announcements. Um, isterac.com is where it's at. So go to isterac.com and click on the Reddit icon here. And then you'll see, not now, uh, you'll see uh, that, um, you know, you can submit posts, post images, 14 day challenges, illustrations, studies, whatever. Um, you can post anything that you are working on right now except fan art um that is like just solid anime tracing or furries and then uh patreon so if you guys are enjoying my channel if you guys want to give back if you're wondering how do i support is how do i keep this channel going i learned so much from her there's um you know there's so much that i'm benefiting from this channel you can always join as a single dollar patron it means the world i know it's a very little amount uh, but I'm trying to get everybody on board. And that's it. That's it for announcements. Portrait Studio is still on sale. I most likely will not use it today. Um, but uh, but you've seen it used in other videos if you're wondering what it is. It's a, a software development. Um, uh, so reference development software available on my store. There's a lot of stuff about it everywhere you look. All right. So this piece, what's happening here? What is happening? Um, exactly what is it that's making this piece not read the way we need it to? So the first and most important thing is that the canvas is very long. So let's clean that up. Let's fix it. And there's two things, two alternatives you have. You have two options. This is a little small today. You have two options for making this work. Right. So the first option is just working with what you have. And, um, respecting the light environment you picked which is dark room slight light coming in from the top how do we make this look more realistic so first and foremost we really needed the space on either side of the canvas because that was looking a little narrow it was like somebody like looking at her through a door and if that was the case if somebody was looking at her through a door it's a very simple effect um and you just uh you just do that and then you blur it for the foreground, filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and that's how you make a character look like they're being peered at through a door. Um, but that's not what we're doing and that's the only way really to get away with a narrow canvas. We still need that space, that establishing space, that breathing room on our side. So again, the first option is, I'm gonna have two options I'll show you. First one is just doing what you did, sticking to it, because lately I've just been kind of in a battle with myself to show you how you guys could have done your illustrations while keeping your choices intact. So basically I just I just want to show off that fundamentals do a lot um, even if we kept the creativity of the student intact. The fundamentals can help even bad design decisions. So this is technically, technically what your canvas should be looking like in a room that is so dim with light like that right um, and there should be even more ambient occlusion everywhere there's it's just like one light there's not a lot of bounce light coming through um, so I'm sorry I'm not looking at the chat and you guys are going at it right now all right so we're getting rid of a lot of that bounce light you have everywhere and just kind of setting up the scene as you portrayed it so when we have a character who is this mysterious hooded seer who also seems to be an entertainer in some kind of really scary club where bad guys go um, and she's kind of sad but she's got her magical mirror that kind of helps her see what's coming and that magical mirror is her is her power um, at the same time but also maybe her curse I don't know but this but the whole situation here is that um, we're seeing too much of her and we're, we're kind of in the previous setup 
it's just a really, really boring shot of a dark scene. Maybe the character is solemn, maybe there it's just it requires too much writing and explanation. You want an illustrating that an illustration that requires no more writing and explanation. You want to t you don't want a word attached or a little description or a paragraph. You don't want to need one once you've painted a good illustration. A good illustration doesn't need a write up. Write that back to me. What I want to do is put some light behind her and basically recreate that room, but silhouette her a little bit. So this, this is all going to look very different at the end. Um, so uh, try to focus, please, to glass. Thank you. Um, and I'm just going to lay down some of that light. And I'm going to pick kind of like a daylight, kind of like a pale light and um, something like that. And yes, those are my brushes from years past. And I use a very simple daylight color behind her. Look at what just happened. Mmm. Mmm. All right. So what's happening is that we are now throwing her into the background. Her silhouette, which is very feminine, is now getting a chance to do some. And a small little light, a small little spotlight changed everything so get this you don't have to stop there you can darken the foreground piece quite a bit just so that so i'll bring back what i deleted so that we could have a more uh, curated access to the light that's a little bit more toward one emphasizing that mood and narrative and plot and that whole storytelling business and two just make it look more realistic it's, it, it helps both um so we got the darkened bit so now her entire eye area is hooded we can let in some of that light maybe i should use a um soft brush um, I'll block that in there. So I'm just using it as a quick opportunity to block so that we can just get a, 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 a touch, a smidgen more realism where we can. And, um, so this mood has now shaded her eyes created a more mysterious figure, emphasized her feminine figure, which I will correct in a little bit, and um, just changed the whole scene. And it's, it's actually, no, 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 no. It's about, no, 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 So like the light on the upper arm and I have to bring in that green bluish light this beautiful daylight color here and it's not like it's a daylight color it's just a very good color for create for an atmosphere that's mostly warm indoors because you have that green versus red impact the top of her hood gets a little bit of that light some of it is kind of sneaking on all right see how washed out it was but oh no they're both gone See how washed out it was before and then bring that down maybe re-enlarge it now okay all right so we're throwing some stuff in the foreground this crystal ball could be see-through so it might have a bit of the light come through it I'm just making stuff up, so obviously you guys will do better to make better decisions. The surface of the table will have some of that ambient light, but we will still get like cast shadows and stuff. Things are blurred just because they're in the in the foreground or background or something. Um, terrible, terrible stuff I'm adding here. But I, I, it's just really bad. 
but I hope it's it's getting the point across. I do want some kind of curtain up here, some kind of whatever. Um, maybe it's just like a veil of some kind. So maybe a, a light veil of some, like a very nice pattern or something like that. Um, how shall I do this? How shall I do it? Alright, so I'm going to throw the first veil layer, lower that down in opacity. And then throw the second veil layer. And that's going to just overlap the first one. And then a, a third one just to kind of make things interesting. Um, and I'm going to merge all of that lock it and then just make sure I bring in that ambient blue light to go through the fabric since anything see-through gets the room's light and then filter blur and just start rendering so really quickly what's the point of it of uh, what's, what's the whole thing behind mouths is they're cylinders they are two cylinders and here, now that the mouth is going to be big enough, we can really introduce some expression. So it's two cylinders, one on top of the other. So that means we're going to have a value stretching across the lower lip of light and a little bit of the upper and a value underneath, just like that. And then we're going to have the light of the chin. And then we're going to have the two dark spots. <clears throat> All right, and then we're gonna have that three quarter view overlap of the two lips. I'm literally just drawing that overlap and zooming out. And then I'm going to just blend out, making sure that outer region makes sense. And you could, if you wanted to, add a color. I recommend you do just to break the palette up a little bit around the skin. So let's flatten the piece. You saw the before before. Um, let's look at the complete image. There are different color temperatures you could use for the background color. There are different, the spotlight color, you could have made it a golden color. The only reason I picked a different color is to bring in some color variation because there's like almost none. It was almost um, uh, uh, monochromatic. So before, see how plain it was and, um, and how it just was not working. And uh, so yeah, before, after. So now you have space on either side. It's not just like a narrow scene before. I should have shown the other alternative where we keep your light environment, but whatever. And then you see how realistic it looks when we bring in that green light, when we cover the eyes up. It just feels more like a complete scene. Before, it's way too narrow. There's no media that needs anything this narrow other than a phone background. <coughs> After. So if you learned something today, please go to istabrak.com and click on the Reddit icon here to join us on Reddit. Um, and if you learned something today and you wanna give back, please support me on Patreon, I really appreciate it. Even if you just join, even if you just join as a dollar patron, that's $12 a year or less. And, uh, and that's it, thanks guys, and I'll see you guys next class, bye.